1868 to 1871 were the bonanza years for Thames. Production from the gold mines is estimated at close to 2.5 million ounces of bullion, valued at $845 million. If you want to taste something of what it was like to be a miner here 140 years ago, the gold mine experience is a good place to start. It offers a tour through an operational 19th century stamper battery where gold-bearing quartz was crushed and on into the mine itself. In the late 1880s, 30 mining schools were formed in the town to give miners practical instruction. The Thames School of Mines was the largest. In 1886, it moved into what had been the old Wesleyan Sunday School building. Today, the School of Mines and Mineral Museum provides a glimpse into the past through classrooms that are presented exactly as they were when the town was overrun with miners. The museum also introduces visitors to the history and science of gold mining. Back at St James Union Church, here's our Thames congregation singing the Kingdom of God. I mentioned earlier that the organ at St. James originally came from the Thames Methodist Church. Our organist this morning, Dr. Ron Newton, is an expert on New Zealand pipe organs and knows a lot about its story. This instrument was built in Christchurch by Nicholas Pierce and his family. Um, Pierce was a trained organ builder. He had trained in England. But when he came to Invercargill, he was a foreman at an iron foundry. But in 1895 he took an early retirement and began organ building and he remained organ building until the mid 1920s. This, is, this organ is the first large instrument they built after the First World War. Um, this instrument was installed in the Methodist Church and it was moved into the Presbyterian Church when the two churches joined up in the 1970s. There was an organ here in this building and that organ is now in our organ museum in Omaru. This organ has a particular significance here in Thames? Yes, it is uh, the most significant instrument um, as far as an original untouched historic organ is concerned. Apart from the casework, which had had a very dark varnish um, put on it at one stage, so we had to take it back to the cowrie and the remu, which is very beautiful, and also the front pipes had originally been aluminium painted rather than gold, but they're the only really 
main differences. The pipes are being painted to blend in with the coloured glass in the church windows. The last two hymns in this morning's programme are played on the electronic organ. What's the difference between the two? Well, of course, a pipe organ produces a three-dimensional sound because of the way it is obviously in, built in three dimensions. Um, an electronic organ produces sound through speakers, and even though there are um, some very sophisticated instruments around, I personally feel that they never really get away from the two-dimensional aspect of um, that pro tone, tone production. New Zealand pipe organs were built for church choirs, not congregations. So the organs tend to be quite small because they were used to accompany the choir. The choir might have 40 people in it, and it was the choir that led the congregational singing, not the organ. So um, in this church, this organ actually suits this building very well in a number of ways, but with a very full congregation the organ is not strong enough to really give the power that is needed for a large sing. So for some of the hymns, the more modern ones particularly, I chose to use the digital organ because it could give a background of sound to the singing, which the pipe organ being located at the front and being designed to accompany a choir is just not quite capable of. Here's the congregation now accompanied by the pipe organ singing John Randall's Lord in the Fullness of My Might. Elizabeth Jones was the conductor.